drift. This bit's going to be really interesting, at least I think so, because I am a nerd. Um, <laughs> no, don't say that. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to continue talking about mtDNA or mitochondrial DNA. Um, last week I did a video about using family tree DNA and I started looking at just the matches section. This week I'm going to have a look at the mutations section which is very sciencey and... Is sciencey a word? So this week we'll be talking about mutations, which I think is a really interesting kind of section to have a look at. Um, but first, I'll just ask you, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it really helps out my channel when you do. And I know it's annoying when I say it every time, but I just have to. That's just a YouTube lore or something. Sorry. Okay, welcome back to Genetics 101 class. Um, the thing that we're going to be talking about today is what those little A, T, C, and G things are in DNA. Maybe you've already seen them, maybe you know what I'm talking about, maybe you haven't. But basically I just want to tell you, because we're going to be looking at mutations today, it's important that you just have a little rough idea about this one. So A, T, C, and G are the building blocks of your DNA. They're base pairs. So A and T, that's adenine and thymine, always pair together and G and C always pair together, they're guanine and cytosine. So these pairs um, are connected by hydrogen bonds and they make up the little building blocks of your DNA. Okay class, have you got that? I think we can move on to the video now, I hope that helps. Uh, congratulations, you have graduated from Genetics 101. <laughs> okay, all right, let's head on over to Family Tree DNA now and we will have a look at mutations. Okay, so signing in. Alright, so we're heading back to mtDNA again. If you haven't already watched my video last week, you might want to check it out. Like I said, that was about matches. Um, that's helpful for that, but let's today go to mutations. Okay, see what I'm talking about? There's a lot of letters and numbers and things here, so I think a lot of people just look at it and go, I don't know what that is, and then just click away from it. So at the top you can see here it's got my haplogroup, H56C. If you've done the test, maybe you're the same, maybe you're something else. There's a lot of different ones, so... And then there's just a little bit of a info about that. Um, so when you scroll down, you've got these two tabs, RSRS values and RCRS values. So the thing that you have to understand about this is that the mutations are where you personally, or your DNA differs from just a generic sort of, um, what's the word, sample. Like, they've created a sample for each haplogroup. So I am of the haplogroup H56C, and so they have a sample that they consider to be the sort of baseline for what H56C is. So the mutations are where I personally differ from H56C. So I'm still part of the H56C group, but I have some small mutations that have happened a long time. Like these aren't just mine. These mitochondrial DNA, like I said last week, is extremely stable. So these mutations happen over an extremely long amount of time. So if you tested my mother or my maternal grandmother or anyone up that tree, you're probably going to get the exact same results as this. So, so the RSRS value is one sample um, and this is how I differ from it. These are my mutations down here. RCRS is just a, another sample. So we'll look at RSRS first. <clears throat> okay, so first we can see the HBR1 differences. Now, the letter on the left here is the letter that the sample has. That's what should be there or, you know, what is typically there in somebody of this haplogroup. The number is the position, the position on the DNA strand. So it's at position 16129, 16129. 
I have a G. So at position 16129, it should be an A, but I have a G. So like I said, somewhere along the line, my DNA has mutated from an A to a G. It's just telling me that. And that's the same for this one and this one and all of them. So. <clears throat> So then you can see over here the same for the HBR2 and for the coding region. So it looks like I have a lot of mutations, but it's actually pretty normal. Like that's what most people looks like. Mutations aren't necessarily bad or, you know, anything to worry about. They're totally normal. They're in everyone's DNA. It's just the process of, you know, each generation when they get copied across, sometimes they get copied wrong. And that's just how that works. <laughs> All right, so now that you know the basics, that the letter on the left is what the sample has, the letter on the right is what I have or you have. Um, I'll just tell you about some of the extra little things in here that you might have noticed that are different or that you might notice in your own results. Okay, firstly, if you see a lowercase letter in your results, so say here, for example, I have a lowercase t, so it's gone from an A to a T. The reason that that's lowercase is it's just letting you know that it's actually switched to a completely different base pairing. So when I normally talk about A and G and T and C, normally A and G are paired together and T and C are paired together. So if you, you know, those pairs are always together. They might switch back and forth sometimes, but they always pair together. But here you can see I've got an A and a T. So T shouldn't be with A. A should always be with G. So what it's telling me here is that I've actually switched to a different base pairing. It's just a little bit more unusual. You might see some of those in your own, but it's, yeah, it's completely changed to a different um, pairing. Uh, okay. The next one that I'll talk about, you might have noticed here, I've got some numbers with just a letter at the end and there's no letter at the beginning. So you might have some like that. These are insertions. So this is where my body has created an extra base pair or, you know, an extra nucleotide there that isn't in the sample. So at position 309.1, my body has inserted an extra C there that isn't normally there. At position 315.1, my body's put a C in there again. So sometimes you'll get insertions, a little extra that your body's added. Uh, you can also have deletions and that's where your body might have removed something that should be there. Um, I don't have any in mind, so you won't be able to see it as an, as an example, but it would show with the letter D, it'll tell you that's a deletion. So if you see a D in your results, it means that your system just doesn't have that one. Now letters other than what I've already mentioned above, letters other than A, T, C, and G, or a D, you might have, they're not as common, but you might see right here, I've got a Y. <laughs> so if you see a letter other than what's expected. If you see something like a Y, that's actually a heteroplasmy. Um, that means that there is more than one value at that location. So normally people have a C at this position and my body has more than one thing happening there. So it's put a Y in there. Um, you can actually go onto Family Tree DNA and it has a whole sort of breakdown of what the different letters are. But, um, this actually may be why I don't have any exact mtDNA matches. So if you remember last week, I talked about the matches and how the genetic distance of zero is normally what you're looking for. You're looking for people who are exact matches to yourself because that means that they'll be most closely related to you. Um, I didn't have any. I only have people with a genetic distance of one and more. And that means that nobody <laughs> is exactly like me. Um, that is most likely because of this heteroplasmy. Um, so people with heteroplasmies are more likely to have no exact matches. Really what's going on here is that my body is in the process of 
doing a mutation here. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's me, or maybe it was my mother, or it could have still been several generations back, but we're now in the process of a new mutation heading in another direction, and that's why it's giving us this. But because of that, um, it's probably fairly recent. I don't have any matches. Um, so yeah, you may experience the same if you have any heteroplasmy, but you may not, so that's cool. Okay, so... Now I'll just show you the RCRS values. So this is, like I said, just going off a different sample. So you might see some of the same mutations um, and you might see some that are different. Um, it's fairly similar. As you can see, it looks a little different. It's got the position. The CRS is what should be there, what's there in the sample. And there's my result. So at 16355, should be a C and my body has a Y, which is the heteroplasmy. Or the next line down at position 16519, I should have a T and I have a C. Um, and you can see there's, yeah, several of them around there. Um, and these ones, as you can see, are insertions. So there's no CRS value, meaning that there's nothing that should be there, but my body's added in some stuff there. Okay, um, okay, I think that about covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, I hope it all makes sense and is clear. If you've got any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I really think the mutations are an interesting thing to look at because it just sort of shows exactly where you or your line has differed from the original sample. It's just kind of like watching the process of evolution at work. These mutations are literally us evolving in sort of slightly different ways. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did. Good luck with your research. Live your dreams. You're a legend. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.